So, my name is Jai Kanakya and I am an AV tracker and a front-end developer at Sokrati. Today, I am going to show you how you can become a better front-end developer by maintaining a daily jQuery plugins website. So, just a quick show of hands, how many of you have used jQuery plugins before? Okay, that covers almost most of the audience. How many have created jQuery plugins before? Okay, a good amount. So, we all know that jQuery is the most popular JavaScript library right now. Uh, as Chris had previously shown, jQuery powers 65 percent of the top 10,000 websites. So, how did jQuery reach such a high usage amount? I believe it is because of the following factors. Simplicity. So, the first time I saw that you can chain methods, I was mind blown. Second, cross browser. So, the initial reason why people adopted jQuery in the first place. You have to just write code once and it should be able to run across all browsers. So, that means you have got lesser code to write and maintain. The fourth one is community. So, you have got a huge and robust community with active maintenance which makes sure that all your browser specific bugs are crashed and your website runs smoothly across all the browsers. And I believe one of jQuery's greatest power lies in the variety and diversity of its plugins that developers have built upon it. So, a famous quote from John Rizik, I just like the plugins where you just snap something in and things just work. So, this was what got me hooked on to jQuery in the first place. From the most complex plugins that create 3D parallax scrolls to the most simplest one that just let's say submits a form using Ajax. jQuery has got each and every type of plugin available. So, how many have visited this web website once before? So, what is jQuery.in? A quick show of hands. Okay, one. So, jQuery.in is a very simple curation engine that features one jQuery plugin a day. It has got prominent links to the home page, to the author, to the demo, and to the download links, so as to get you started as fast as possible in using that plugin. So, currently it lists about 1300 unique jQuery plugins. So, let's say you want to add some amazing audio effects to your website. You can use easyaudioeffects.js. Let's say you want to add some snazzy background particle system on your website. You can use particleround.js. Let's say you want to visualize complex calendar schedules on your app. I've got the one for you. Graph schedule.js. So, similarly, let's say you want to add some intelligent time aware flat shadows to your DOM elements. jQuery has got you covered, you have got four shadows.js. So, I can go on and on, on about the 1 to 9 6 plugins that are more available. So, uh, let me give you a bit of a background. So, why I started jQuery.in. So, back in June 2012, I was uh, just getting started with my web designing career and plugins.jQuery was down and there was no uh, website or app where you can just discover new jQuery plugins and search for new, newer tools. And at that time, I also wanted to learn WordPress. Um, and I was using browser bookmarks to save and link to all the important scripts, tutorials, code, or anything interesting that I found that was quickly becoming unfeasible. So, this is why I launched jQuery.in. So, what is the most important thing in maintaining a daily jQuery plugins blog? It's curation. So, curation is a field of endeavor that is involved in managing, assembling, and presenting a select list of items. So, how does this help you as a front-end developer? So, every weekend I sit through, uh, I sit through, a, I go through a lot of Twitter feeds, a lot of RSS feeds, a lot of NPM repositories, a lot of GitHub repositories in order to search for new and better jQuery plugins. So, how does this help me as a front-end developer is that one, I always get to stay in touch with the current trends and the latest tools. Second, uh, for any new project that I use, because I've got this vast knowledge of jQuery plugins, I can cherry pick the most useful or the best jQuery plugins to use in my next project. 
The most important thing I learned over here is patience. Because doing this for the past three years for every weekend, it requires a lot of patience and persistence. Especially in front-end development, uh, learning a new framework, whether you are learning a new language, whether you are solving a very hard to debug bug, or whether uh, you are thrown in an existing project of which you have no idea about, you should have the patience and the persistence to continue with it. Also, the next time your client or your designer or your project manager asks you if a particular effect, animation or user interface can be implemented, you always know the answer because you have listed so many jQuery plugins. So this is how it helps in your current projects. The next thing it, it improves is your skill set. So today, if you go through the careers page for any front-end developer today, the number of skills that are listed goes on increasing day by day. So because of which, uh, coding is not the only thing that front-end developers need to, need to be mastered in. So every day, you have to got to work in sync uh, with the clients, with the design team, with the marketing team, with your project managers, with the back-end teams, with your DevOps teams, in order to get something online. So it's always advantageous to have a basic knowledge of how things work across all the domains. So, and if you're maintaining a daily online blog, you automatically get to learn all of these things and you are able to solve problems in other teams as well. So this is how you can remain in better sync with other teams because you have already worked, you have kind of worked in that team and you have some very basic knowledge of how it works. The next thing I learned is marketing. So out of the rules, laws, axioms, gyans of marketing, I believe these following points for form, form the main foundation. First, marketing starts before starting any project. Marketing should never stop, even after a successful product launch or a successful product. Third, content uh, email marketing, content marketing, uh, word of mouth marketing. So these are the best mediums. And the last one, you should always have the ability to run experiments of let's say A and B test in front of actual users. So in my case, whenever I want to launch anything new, I first run some basic marketing on jQuery.in in order to get some beta feedback. And I should be able to measure them effectively. The next thing I learned is search engine optimization. Now, SEO was a very hard learned initial lesson for me. SEO is not something that you can just lay off doing for a very long time. Uh, think of it like this, SEO is a long term game plan. And if your app is dependent on SEO, you have to got to include it from the beginning. So some key points for SEO I learned is that one, black hat SEO does not work. You can try your best, but it just does not work. These three points always contribute to a good SEO score. The first is content, so which is the king. The next is regularity or the frequency of your posts. The last one is social media. Don't just have accounts across every social media. You have to be active and in interactive across all of them. Coming back to the less sexier part of the job is maintenance. If you build it, you got to maintain it. So some key points over here I learned is that you don't realize the importance of backups until you lose data once. So I've lost data once and I know how important, it, how uh, difficult it is to get it back up and running again. The next thing, always get a reliable host with a good hosting plan and quick support. Server prices have decreased drastically in, the, in this last few years and this is, hosting is one of the area that you should definitely splurge on. Uh, some quick pointers to you, always maintain revisions, so that's basically, and a quick rule of thumb is that, let's say tomorrow you lose everything. You should be able to set up everything right from DNS to automated email marketing in less than a day. So this is a ground rule that I always work upon. The most important thing that I have learned is source code hunting. Now, everyone has got a different way of writing his or her own code. Some people like to make use of 
heavy use of software patterns some people follow very strict coding guidelines and structures some people write more comments than the code itself some might follow some entirely different conventions than you browsing source code is still considered one of the best ways to boost your development skills as great writers or also voracious readers we too should also learn to spend quality time reading quality code so by reading so many codes uh, what i have learnt is there are so many shortcuts in writing the same thing there are so many new workflows of writing the same code there are so many new tools and integrations that aid you to write better code people have written so many integrations with existing apps that you weren't thought were possible before the next thing is networking so how many of you people say that networking is very important so that is why we are all here in the first place because we want to interact and exchange with ideas with other feds and we enjoy ourselves doing so so in the case of jk.in i have tried to contact each and every plugin author whether it can be through twitter whether it can be through facebook whether it can be through linkedin whether it can be through email or even google plus so because of contacting a new fed almost every day i have gotten a lot of project recommendations a lot of offers a lot of ideas a lot of collaboration opportunities a uh, lot of amazingly long email chains so i have got to learn so many things so i can tell you with certain certainty that if you are maintaining an online blog your network will grow exponentially and it's also great to be in touch with so many developers opportunities and coming back to career choices so as a relative newcomer to the field you can also make informed career decisions by asking some very crucial things to the more experienced peers the next thing automation everything that can be automated should be automated so if you are running an online blog every single bit of automation counts so this is very important so right now jk.in so it has got some existing wordpress plugins it has i have written some custom wordpress plugins i have written some custom bookmarklets i have written some custom chrome extensions i have made use of made use of some of integration with some online apps also i have written some custom automation scripts so right now jk.in has got the ability to buffer up push for one month to get the repo information to schedule them day by day to check for broken links then to schedule then to publish them day by day then to inform that author then also simultaneously to share it across all the so social media channels including email and later on do some basic seo optimizations so all this flow is currently automated so how does this help you so you can use this existing infrastructure to have to launch new, newer blogs or you can uh, use that existing pieces of code that you have to write more automation tools also for every next project that you undertake you will make sure you will write the project in such a way that it can later on be automated so some key takeaways for you is that keep calm keep using jquery plugins it's never too late to start something just launch you can iterate and optimize for it later so thank you guys so i think so yeah so the slides are available online as well i have kind of rushed through the slides but so i wanted to make this more interactive so if you have got any more questions any doubts how do i launch how do i do this how do i do that you can easily ask me any questions doubts yes sir
Yeah. There are two different things. So jQuery plugins, Angular directive, web component. So this is how it is structured. But I think so web, web component is currently in kind of beta testing. Everyone is still trying to get to know them. Yeah, some jQuery plugins have or, or are trying to adopt to web components. So they are trying to write the code or they are trying to write the structure in such a way that later on, let's say one year later or two year later, they can then shift to web components. They can offer that same thing as a web component. Because I have seen many jQuery plugins that have become independent scripts or independent Angular directives. So by separating the core logic, you can do that. Web components, I think so, is supported by Chrome and Firefox. But the adoption rate, so right now, it is still getting that initial bunch of users. It, it hasn't still hit that sweet spot where everyone starts using it. Okay, thank you for being an amazing audience.